Today I wanted to talk about, we were supposed to talk about writing the line, um, which is funny because I, I, that was the name of the conference and we decided to make that the name of my talk only because I didn't know what I wanted to talk about yet. Um, but I wanted to talk about this, I interpret this line as, of course, the poetic line, which is where my home is. So no matter what I end up doing with these novels and these films and these children's books, I always tend to gravitate back to poetry. But also it was, it became about this crossing the line um, because I thought I would show the film and talk about how I turned poetry into a film, into more poetry. Um, so the story starts in Oct no, August 2014. August 2014 was a really rough month for our city. Um, I, well, it was a great year for me. I had just moved into a house. Um, <laughs> that was funny. Ha ha ha. So much tragedy, but I got a house. Yay. Um, and it was right beside, or not right beside, it was like about half a block away from the Red River. And the Red River and I had have, had a very complicated relationship, um, which I, I talk about a little bit in the film. Um, so it was, a, it was kind of bittersweet to be so close to this river because the river is a very powerful river and a river center, a lot of tragedies tend to center around our river. Um, and in August 2014, there were two very distinct tragedies that happened, both on the same day. Um, one was the loss of Farron Hall and the other was the discovery and loss of, of Tina Fontaine. Um, so we, it was incredibly saddening time and I think we, that many of us were, there's few of us that weren't untouched by those tragedies because they were so compounded. And it was, the focus was so, so, so focused on the river and how horrible the river can be, um, how polluted the river can be, how, um, how people are so often found and lost in the river. Um, that same summer, which was less in the news, but down at um, near St. John's Park at the foot of the Redwood Bridges is right by my house, um, I had a friend who lost her mother um, to the river as well. The river has be became tragically a place to dispose of humans, but also a place where humans chose to end their lives, um, which is really sad because the river is as much as it is this sad place, it's also this amazing body of water. Um, it is amazing power. It has intense power. It has um, intense beauty. I know, you don't think so, but it really does. It's actually supposed to be brown. I like to point that out to people. The brown part actually comes from the mud that is um, torn up from its side, that's a really bad, you know, it's just a river and it has a very powerful current and the mud is flown into that. So that's why it's brown. It's not just dirty. Um, that's where I like to start. Um, and it comes from a lake called Tra Lake Traverse, somewhere in South Dakota. And it actually starts as a very modest river that actually picks up speed around the border. Um, and once it gets to Winnipeg, it goes incredibly fast. And the corners of the Red River are almost like direct turns. And it speeds up and up and up until it actually flows through the, the up to Lake Win Winnipeg. Yeah, I totally remember. Um, but that's actually why we have a city here, because the river moves so quickly and that people were able to come here. Um, and it was a wonderful highway that brought everyone in traditional knowledge, in traditional indigenous knowledge, water and water, water ways and water bodies are representative of women. Um, we are known as water keepers um, because of our ability to create life and bring it forward with water. Um, so as much as this river was this place of tragedy and and sadness and mourning, and as much as it was this incredible, powerful being, it also, to me, was a very feminine, feminine symbol, a feminine symbol not only um, misused 
um, and mistreated, uh, but still managed to retain that beauty. So I started writing about the river because that's what we do as poets, right? We have tragedy and we, we cry about things and we rant on social media and then we scurry away off into our little corners and we write poems because we're gonna change the world with poetry. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. So I started writing a poem and then um, I was approached by a producer at NFB and she wanted to make a movie, a film, sorry, film. We have to call it a film. It's not a movie, it's a film. Um, and I said I wanted to make a movie about this poem. And I will read you this poem. This poem is called River Woman. This river is a woman. She is bright and she is beautiful. She once carried every nation here, but she is one of those women too soon forgotten and broken like a body that begs without words, only rough hands that reach out, palms up. This river is a woman and she's been dragged and dragged. Metal coils catch her tangled hair and everyone wants to know her secrets, but she keeps them. She won't let them go unless she trusts you, unless you ask real nice, unless she just feels like it. This river is a woman and she is full of good intentions, bad regrets, and sometimes she just folds into herself, can slow to a slush, then rush into race, currents indiscernible, patterns intangible, and below she goes even faster. This river is a woman, forever returning, twisting north, a snake carved into prairie grass, hiding everywhere eroding with age etched into her edges and newly born every day. This river is your lover. She curls around you, pulses and fills you like a heartbeat. And if you are very quiet, all you hear is her. This river is your mother. She flows on and on and unnoticed, slips in and slides out as if she was never here as if she was always here. This river is my sister. She is bright and beautiful and brown, sings soft every summer, holds us up all winter, and every spring she swells, reminds us we are just visitors here. This is her country. She is that woman. Her deft voice reaches out, broken by everything that has been thrown into her, but somehow her spirit rages on. Somehow a song like her can never fade. Can make that into a film, right? Thank you. So my producer at NFB said, "Yeah, we're not really making that into a film, um, but we're going. We explored concepts of the river and how to shoot the river. Um, we ended up um, meeting with Kyle um, Kyle Kimach and Bernadette Smith, who ran Drag the Red." Um, still runs Drag the Red when she's not doing a million other things. Um, and so we, we approached the idea of a river uh, through their story and also through my story. Um, all the while, my most important um, criteria was to make her look as beautiful as possible. Um, so I hope we achieve that. Um, I will say that I was very pleased to know that this film um, is nominated for a Canadian Screen Award. Now I'm going to tell you a funny story, because it's levity. Um, I didn't know what a Canadian Screen Award was, because I'm such an asshole, and I write. A, I work. I work in film, and it. Um, I, did, I just. I kind of said, "Oh, Canadian Screen Award. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, great. Cheers." Um, it's not like it's a Gemini, but whatever. <laughs> and then someone told me it is. The Genies and Geminis are now the Canadian Screen Awards. I'm like, oh, 
shit. And then I felt like such an asshole because I'm not a filmmaker. I just like, I'm gonna make a film, boof. It's kind of like, um, oh, she's not here, but Ariel Gordon, when she won all these poetry awards, she's like, I'm not a poet, I just decided to write poetry. And I kind of want to punch her, <laughs> you know? I didn't, she's a wonderful person and a wonderful poet worthy of all the praise. Um, but I, like, I'm a poet, so um, this is actually credit due to my co director and writer Erica McPherson, who's a wonderful local, and this was all made and shot in and around Winnipeg. So crossing the line, or maybe we can call it dancing on the line, because we started with a poem, we went into a film, and then the process of making the film was, of course, as you can imagine, quite arduous and really, really depressing and full of cigarettes. So in that, it was actually a really beautiful time in my life when I could smoke. Um, <laughs> they're so bad for you. But we, um, oh, so good. We ended up, it was a beautiful shoot. We had um, Anita Labosh and Iris Ning, um, who was our cinematographer, a brilliant cinematographer, and we had an extra boat, and we basically spent eight days on the river on two boats. Uh, it was Kyle, Kelvin, and a bunch of women. It was an all-woman crew. Um, there was a lot of pee breaks, which when you're on a boat is really inconvenient. Um, but it was, it was funny, and it was beautiful, and very bonding, bondy, that's a word. Um, but it was also very sad because it was these excerpts of, ha ha, this is so much fun, I'm on a boat, um, to, um, okay, let's talk about tragedy and just rip your heart out in front of people, in front of a camera. Um, but it gave me a lot of um, moments to do what I always do, which is scurry away and write some poetry. Um, and this is one of the poems, there were several that came out of this, this process because I really needed to um, process all of this in a different way. So I crossed the line back over to poetry. Um, and I'll just read one from this. Um, and it's called This River, go figure. Um, and it's also a repetitive, like one of those poems that, like the other one, where I keep repeating a word. And I understand that only sometimes it gets I usually don't read these two back to back, so you think like, wow, doesn't she write poems in different ways? But it worked for the poem. So this is what came out of that. This river is old. Her story is long. This river is wide and open. But this river is broken. She is like the pillars of old piers, the ones that stick out of the water at the shore, lapped over by every wake. You can't always see, but she's there. This river is ignored. People cross the street to avoid this river. They pretend they meant to go that way all along, but you can tell by the hunch in their shoulders. No one wants to be anywhere near this river. And this river is so inconvenient. They had to make bridges to cut across her inconsistent bends, straight lines to make up for all her dangerous curves. This river is a dump, a waste. Her only abundance is garbage and blue smudges iridescent in the sun, shining oil as it surfaces from the sludge below. She is a crumbling dock, the one caution taped off and fenced away, left to rot. They will tear her down one day, or they will tear it down one day as soon as they can. One day when they think we're not looking, they will pull it apart and take all the pieces away without a word. But this river is smart. Street smart and book smart. This river has learned and been schooled. This river is so well read she's worn out. This river is a trickster. She can lick her lips and smile you closer, and just when you think you have her, she puffs black smoke and laps off into her next form. How irrational is this river? This river is a bitch in a mood. She won't just let you throw anchor where you want to. She won't just let you go because you want to. But this river is sweet. She can be so gentle, so beautiful. She is a water carrier after all. 
She is a masterpiece with the wispy eyes of Norval Morisot and the languid hands of Daphne Ojig. She is love. She is the eagle soaring just above the trees. She is power pushing pure north. This river is the reason we're all here. She carried us on her broad brown back without complaint. This river's only payment has been our refuse, refusals, indifference. But this river doesn't need your intention or your inquiry. This river is too busy doing what she has always done, kicking ass and taking care. This river has never been idle. She was here before you, and she will be here long after you're gone. This river is full, this river is family, this river is forever, because this river, of course, is red. <sighs> it's a problem with long poems, there are more opportunities to screw up. That's why I like the short ones where you just get right through. Um, but that's the line. That's the line that I like to cross and cross back again. And um, yeah, that's what I prepared today. Um, I know the novel and the poetry book are for sale, and I know I didn't read from either one of those. Um, and so I apologize if that's disappointing. I can do reenactments in the side if you need me to. Um, <laughs> just improv. Um, but I want to thank you all for coming and for paying attention today.